My family and food is my passion and shopping for the very best fresh ingredients is what makes all the difference. Join me as we go on a journey of heartwarming food filled with mouth-watering dishes bound to get those taste buds tingling. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we'll be preparing a poolside lunch for family and friends. On the menu is a roast butternut, sweet potato and feta salad, some lamb and rosemary kebabs with tzatziki and a chopped salad and we'll finish off with a delicious peach tart. We're starting with our lamb kebabs. Before we start the marinade, I'm going to blanch some vegetables. And I've got some baby onions and some mushrooms here. Now the reason we blanch them is because there's a lot of water in both of these vegetables. And when you marinate them, that water will actually dilute the marinade. So they literally will go into the boiling water for maybe one minute, just to start softening them. So I've got some fresh mint and rosemary. We've got a seasoning salt some salad dressing, any salad dressing, a nice Italian dressing, whatever you can find. A little bit of parsley as well, lemon juice, and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to mix that all into a bowl. And I'll use about the juice of, a, of one lemon. We've got some salad dressing. About a half a cup is great. Some seasoning salt. I've got some chopped mint already and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And even though the lamb is quite fatty, the olive oil gives you a lovely light on the fire when it's grilling so that you get a nice flame. So a nice little bit of salt and some black pepper. Just a drop of parsley, Italian or flat leaf. And that all adds flavor. So if you don't have mint and you don't have rosemary, you could use any herbs that you have. Anything that will go with lamb. Basil goes with lamb. Oregano goes with lamb. And if you have something growing in your garden, it really will add lots and lots of flavor, so it doesn't matter what it is. My vegetables need another minute, but before that I've got some red pepper, and all I'm going to do with the red pepper is cut it into wedges because of those I'm going to thread onto the kebab sticks. So I don't want them too small. They need to be quite a nice size. I'm using metal kebab sticks. First of all, they're much easier to grill with and second of all, they don't need to be soaked. I'm just keeping my eye on these. I think they're ready. Let's take them out of the water. And we'll just let them cool for a few minutes. I've got some beautiful lamb steaks here. This can be done with a leg of lamb, with a lamb shoulder, with lamb chops if you like. I like to use lamb steaks because they're very meaty and they cut quite nice into even cubes. The thing about this is that if they're not even, one part is going to cook quicker than another. And lamb needs to be cooked evenly, especially on a kebab. So they're boneless. They're very easy to cut. They're quite lean because they've been trimmed neatly. And I'm going to cut them quite thick. Remember meat shrinks when it cooks, so you don't want to cut it too small to start off with. Leave the fat on. It's the most important thing when you're grilling because if you take the fat off, you're going to have very dry meat. So always start off with your hard vegetable first. And that will be your onion, because it's nice and firm. It's just softened a little bit in the middle. I'm going to thread a piece of meat on here. And you want to make sure there are no little pieces hanging off. Then we're going to do a red pepper. And this is a matter of taste. You can really use whatever you like. Another piece of meat. 
Mushrooms I like putting in the middle because they tend to fall off if you put them on the end. And if you can see this piece is hanging, I'm just going to tuck it in and thread it onto my kebab stick so I ensure that it doesn't hang off when I'm grilling. Okay, another piece of red pepper for colour. Right, and that one's ready to go. Right, the kebabs are done. Now all we need to do is marinate them. And I really want to coat them on all sides so that they get beautiful flavour. So don't be shy with your seasoning. And we're going to keep them in the fridge while they marinate. While that's marinating, we're going to start with our vegetable salad. I love a really nice roasted vegetable salad because it's kind of like vegetables and a salad all in one and it will complement the kebabs really well. So what I've got here is some butternut slices, some sweet potato and some baby potatoes and I'm going to roast them on the bottom rack of an oven to get them really nice and golden and give them lots of colour. I want them firm but cooked through. My butternut can stay this thickness because I want it to be crispy on the outside and a little bit soft inside. The sweet potato is unpeeled. I'm going to cut it into thick slices. And the potatoes we cut vertically. They look much nicer when they open that way. So on my lined baking tray, I'm going to put the skin side down so that the starch doesn't stick to the baking tray and the same with the potatoes. This will take about 40 minutes to roast in the oven and I like the bottom shelf because I'm going to get lots and lots of colour. So it's not the kind of salad where you need lots of, lots of vegetables. We're going to spread it out on a beautiful platter and all we want is a nice fruity olive oil, a lovely drizzle of that on the veggies. A nice salt, just to give it some flavour. Some black pepper. My oven's preheated to 180 degrees, bottom rack. Let's get this in the oven. So our lamb kebabs are marinating, our vegetables are in the oven. After the break, we'll finish our roast vegetable salad, make our tzatziki and chopped salad, and start our fresh peach tarts. When the sun is shining, there's nothing nicer than being with family and friends around the pool. Today we're doing a poolside lunch just for that. Roast butternut, sweet potato and feta salad. Some lamb and rosemary kebabs. With tzatziki and a chopped salad. And we'll finish off with a delicious peach tart. I've already marinated some lamb kebabs got some roasted vegetables in the oven and we're going to make a tzatziki and chopped salad to go with our lamb. So we want to do our salad dressing for our roast vegetables. They're almost finished. It's red wine vinegar and some olive oil. About a third of a cup of each. You never want to put it on the salad too soon because it will make the vegetables soggy. So rather dress it just before you serve it. A little bit of honey and some salt and pepper. And we'll just give that a nice whisk. In the salad I'm adding some avo. So I want to cut the avo into nice big wedges because I've got chunky vegetables so it needs to match. And the feta also into nice big chunks. It's quite rich Danish feta so you don't need too much of it. And we're going to check our vegetables now to see if they're ready. Mm. 
My vegetables are perfect. They've got beautiful color. They're not too soft, so they're ready to go onto a platter. While we're waiting for them to cool for a few minutes, I'm going to cut some figs. I've got beautiful dried figs here. We just want to take that little top stem off and cut them into wedges also to match. And I'm going to just place my vegetables on the platter, scattered quite loosely, so we can see their color. We're going to scatter our figs around, our feta. We need some avo, nice big wedges of avo here. Cashews, most important for a lovely crunch. A little bit of chopped parsley. I think I'm going to put a bit of mint in there. I think that would actually complement it really, really well. So we'll just shred a little bit of mint. Sprinkle it on top. And you've got beautiful flavors, lovely crunch in your nuts, texture of the figs, and we're going to just dress it with a little bit of dressing. Drizzle that over and leave it to rest for about 10 minutes before you serve it. And that's my roasted butternut salad with sweet potatoes and feta. So I've got a, an English cucumber. We want to peel it and seed it. When it's peeled, you get a much nicer color and when you seed it, you don't get any of that water. Cut it down the middle. Take the seeds out with my fancy gadget. These are the kind of things I love in the kitchen, the ones that really work. And then we're going to grate it quite coarsely. And of course, tzatziki complements lamb beautifully. It works really, really well with it. Okay, that needs to go into a strainer. And we'll set that aside for about 10 minutes while we make our chopped salad. So for the chopped salad, I've got some red onion, some beautiful red tomatoes. I'm going to use some more cucumber in here, but not a lot. And we want to chop this quite finely. Not too much onion. Red onion or white onion is quite strong in flavor. So we simply want a little bit just to give us a bit of flavor. Now we're gonna do the cucumber. And that's the easiest way of chopping. We add it to the other ingredients. I like to use a nice fruity olive oil, a good splash of it. And you never want to put salt too early. A Little bit of fresh lemon juice, some beautiful fresh mint. There's something about mint that just adds a new dimension to a lot of dishes. It really makes your dishes light and fresh. So we need a little bit of salt. And here garlic works quite well if you like garlic as well. Some black pepper. Give it a good toss. Our salad's ready. Got this beautiful bowl to put it into. And I'm sure that the cucumber's ready for the tzatziki. You can see there's a lot of liquid that's come out of this cucumber. I'm going to squeeze even more out of it so as not to make my dressing wet and soggy. And we'll mix it in this bowl with my beautiful Greek yogurt, a little bit of chopped garlic. I like parsley a little bit. A little bit of fresh mint. A drizzle of olive oil. 
in the traditional Greek way, and some salt and pepper. You could add some lemon juice if you want, but I think that this is going to be perfect. And that goes into this dish. There we go, our tzatziki's done, our chopped salad is ready, our roasted vegetable salad is also ready. When we come back, we'll be making our grilled lamb kebab and our fresh peach tarts. Welcome back. Today we're making a light but tasty meal for those lazy sunny days around the pool to spend time with family and friends. We've already made a roasted butternut sweet potato and feta salad. We've made a tzatziki and a chopped salad. We're going to finish our lamb kebabs now on the braai and we're going to be making some fresh peach tarts. I've preheated the braai. There's a lovely flame which is going to give me beautiful colour on the lamb. So we can start grilling these. And the secret is not to turn them too often. So we're going to put them onto the grill, let them go for about five minutes, and then only turn after five minutes when they've got really nice colour. If they stick to the grill, they're not ready to turn. I want to baste all the time with this beautiful marinade that they've been sitting in. And I'm putting them there the closest part of the flame is, or the highest flame, so that they get really, really nice colour. My kebabs are done. They're beautiful. They've got stunning colour. And they're ready to go with my chopped salad and my tzatziki. I've got some baby pita here, just to accompany the whole dish. It really just finishes it off. I'm going to place them on the platter. And your vegetables also add to it. They look juicy, they look tender, they look quite delicious. They only need about 10 minutes, because lamb should always be slightly pink inside, not medium rare like beef. And to go with that, my tzatziki and my chopped salad, and you have the perfect meal. The only thing that's missing is our delicious peach dessert. I have some puff pastry, butter and apricot jam for glaze, a little bit of treacle brown sugar, which is nice and sticky, and of course some beautiful dessert peaches. I've got these really nice cutters that will just cut the shape immediately out of my tart. And I'm going to do four today. So I'm putting them onto a lined baking tray. We can reuse this puff pastry and all I need to do is roll it up and freeze it again or refrigerate it if I want to. So we want to brush with a little bit of butter. It's just to give you a base for the tart and it really doesn't need to be a lot. Just to coat the bottom. I'm going to sprinkle some brown sugar on there. And that too is going to give me a gorgeous sticky base. My family always complain that I'm experimenting and trying out new recipes all the time. And what happens is they land up the guinea pigs on the dessert, of course. So that's our prep for our tarts. Now we're going to slice the peaches. And you want to cut them quite thin into nice little circles. And then we're going to slice them into nice thin segments. So you're keeping the skin on, you're not taking it off. And all we're going to do is beautiful little circles on this pastry, overlapping them to form a nice circle. 
I wouldn't recommend you doing a bigger tart than a 24 centimeter one because your dough will get soggy in the middle from the juice of the fruit. So keep it quite small. They bake better and quicker. Right, they're all on my pastry. I'm going to brush them with a little bit more butter. This just gives them a nice gloss when they're baking. And the apricot jam is simply for glazing, so we only need that later. Now you want your pastry to puff up around the fruit. So even though I've gone to the edges, you're going to get a nice little flat circle when it comes out of the oven. And it's puff pastry, so we always bake on 200 degrees middle rack of the oven for a minimum of 20 minutes until that pastry is beautiful, golden and really brown underneath. I've preheated my oven, so let's start baking them. Our tarts are ready, They're perfect and ready for glazing. They're hot and sticky, but beautiful and crusty underneath. And when they're crusty, they're nice and firm. And they can be served at room temperature with some beautiful vanilla ice cream or a dollop of cream. I'm glazing them with some apricot jam, which I've put in the microwave just to loosen it slightly so that it's easier to spread and brush. And this just gives it a really nice finish. You could add some boiling water to the apricot jam and that will also thin it out and make it easier for brushing. And my favorite way of ending this dessert is a little sprinkling of icing sugar which completes the picture. That's it for today's menu, our rosemary and lamb kebabs. Homemade tzatziki with chopped salad. A delicious roasted butternut sweet potato and feta salad. And fresh peach tarts. Lunch by the pool has never been this stylish. Catch us next time when we'll be making a simple, stylish summer supper consisting of a chilled tomato gazpacho, herb break of lamb, broccoli salad with a poppy seed dressing, and a naughty nougat delicious cheesecake. Remember, keep it simple and stylish.